One of the central beliefs in an ideal free market system is that the single-minded pursuit of self-interest will also promote group interest. But in the real market, the costs and benefits of each option depend upon the choices of other individuals. Blind pursuit of self-interest may result in suboptimal individual and group outcome. Behavior to navigate such game theoretic situation is called strategic. Strategic situations are commonly represented by a two by two payoff matrix. In the invisible hand situation, where group interests and self interests are compatible, the matrix might look like this. There are two individuals. John and Mary, and two options: the right choice R, and the left choice L. The payoff of John's choices are colored green, and the payoffs of Mary's choices are colored tan. The numbers are cardinal index of possible payoffs. There are four possible combination of choices. Mary's left choice could be combined with John's left choice, or John's right choice. Similarly, Mary's right choice could be combined with John's left choice, or John's right choice. In this situation, the optimal choice pair. Is R for John and R for Mary, with each scoring five. John and Mary can always end up in this choice pair, as long as they head for R. And each can depend on the others to do so, because the payoff for choosing R always trumps the payoff for choosing L. For Mary. The payoff for R is always greater than the payoff for L, and for John, the payoff for R is always greater than the payoff for L. In other words, R is the dominant strategy, and R R is a stable solution from which nobody has any incentive. To defect, it is technically known as a Nash equilibrium. This payoff matrix is difficult to grasp quickly, and its two-person limit unnecessarily confining. Let's graph the payoff matrix by extending it into n number of people. The payoff for choosing R goes linearly from left to right as the number of people choosing R increases. The payoff for choosing L goes linearly from right to left as the number of people choosing L increases. The endpoints of the payoff curves correspond to the two by two payoff matrix. A quick glance at this graph shows that R dominates L because the payoff for R is entirely above the payoff for L, since each person choosing the same option has identical payoff. The collective payoff at each point along the horizontal axis. Is the weighted average of the payoff for each option at that point? The weights are the percentages of people choosing each of the two options. The highest collective payoff occurs when everybody chooses R at A. At this point, nobody has any incentive to choose L. So A is both a collectively superior and a stable equilibrium solution. In this invisible hand game, R represents the single-minded pursuit of self-interest. L 
is the abstinence from such pursuit, because there is no conflict between individual payoff and group payoff. The invisible hand situation is strictly speaking not strategic, but it is a good benchmark to compare with typically strategic situations. But if the dominance between the R and the L option is reversed, the option L that delivers decreasing payoffs with more supporters will dominate the option R that delivers increasing return with more supporters. The invisible hand game then becomes the classic prisoner's dilemma game, where self-interest conflicts with group interest. The game is so named because the original story involved two suspects in a joint crime who are struggling over whether each should confess separately to get a lighter sentence or remain collectively silent to escape any punishment. Although the collectively superior solution still occurs at A, where everybody chooses R, as indicated by the green collective payoff curve. A is no longer a stable solution. The higher payoffs from option L offer constant temptation to defect from R. This defection will continue until everybody chooses L at B, a stable but collectively inferior solution. The situation of cheating comes to mind. People are collectively better off when most don't cheat. But the few individuals who cheat are even better off if they can get away with cheating. People are collectively worse off, of course, when most routinely cheat. But there is no self-correcting mechanism to get out of an entrenched cheating culture. The R choosers are not powerless to prevent wholesale defection to L. L's payoffs are higher than R's payoffs only if the identity of the L choosers is not known. If L choosers can be excluded by incurring a detection cost of one unit, then R choosers' net payoff would never fall below two and L chooser's payoff would never rise above 1, since L choosers will be dealing only among themselves. Some L chooser would remain, because R choosers would not incur the detection cost unless the percentage of L exceed one-third. When the percentage of L choosers is one-third, the expected payoff to R without detection would be just equal to the payoff to R with detection. So defection from R will be stopped once the acceptable threshold share of L chooses is reached.